guys, I'm sure all of you are having the best of your times at home. I'm Monica Swami. I'm basically a corporate trainer and a transition coach. And in recent times, I have been willfully attending a lot of discussions which have been going round the globe on the effects of COVID. Though I've been hearing a lot of good news on the relationship and the atmospheric environmental effects of the COVID, but still the sour truth of its ill effect on the business, jobs, and the various things like salaries and promotions cannot be ignored. And today, to answer all such igniting questions, I have with me one of the most renowned personality of the Indian industry, Mr. Ravindra Bhan, the CEO and founder of TPS Management with us. On the show, The Master Minds. Welcome, sir. Thank you for being with us on the show. Hope the lockdown is treating you well. Uh, good afternoon, Monica. Thank you very much. I'm very glad to be here. I'm not sure whether I'm the most renowned person, but yes, I know a lot of people. I do not know how many of them know me, but that's unimportant. First of all, thanking you again for uh, giving me an opportunity to speak with you this, uh, this afternoon and possibly answer some of your questions on this. Yeah, the lockdown has not played very good on me. I have two reasons. Number one, I belong to the high risk category of the age group and uh, which I have always been trying to defy, but it doesn't work always. Uh, so that puts a bigger responsibility of, uh, on myself to keep myself completely immune and completely uh, protected. The second, of course, is that, um, you know, despite my, <laughs> despite my being in that age group, my normal working style is that I travel about 18 to 20 days a month. Now imagine after 30 years of traveling 18 days a month, you have 30 days of non, non-stop stay at one place. So it does kind of, uh, it does kind of make a difference in, your, in you mentally. But then I'm very happy to say that this time actually was very well spent. I am so glad that I had this time to myself. I had this time where I didn't have to run after flights. I didn't have to catch up the cabs. I didn't have to change cities once in a day. And it provided an excellent opportunity for me to work by myself, be by myself, be with my family, be with my work. And that was very good. So overall, an excellent experience. So it's really good to hear that you have had a really wonderful time in this lockdown. But frankly, putting it up, sir, being a transition coach and a trainer, a lot yeah. of people have been approaching me all these days with questions which have a lot of concerns and where I'm answering them to my level best. But at the same time, people like you who can give them a better answer, I would definitely try to be that one link where we can get the best to the people back. So my first question to you, uh, as I myself, I belong to the l and industry. My first question to you would be, what would be your advice to the l and professionals in this changing times where we are trying to move the entire learning platform from online to offline and sometimes from offline to online? So what would be your advice to the l and consultants? Okay, my, uh, uh, to be honest, um, let's look at two things. Uh, does this situation change the need for LND? Does it make LND redundant or does this make LND more important? My personal feeling is that this situation is a reminder for us and uh, the user managers and the actual students and the actual participants that LND is a greater need than what you thought. I may not be talking of any specific skill. But one thing that we learned is that we saw a lot of fault lines in the rock. We did see that there were a lot of things which were going wrong in our processes, in our ability to uh, you know, face up to crises. So that serves as a very, very strong reminder that l and learning and development is an important part of our work. Right. So that is uh, my own understanding of whether this will, uh, what is the l and message. Then coming to this, um, you know, online, offline thing, you, know, you, you might have read, I think you even uh, saw it on my LinkedIn, 
uh, there were uh, uh, HR and L&D managers who were till six months back saying not really worried, they were not really ready to make a complete transition to online. Right? They had their fantastic uh, justifications. Now, I won't judge that. Now, today, 100% of them are swearing by online. Now, this is a kind of a dichotomy for me. Were they wrong then or are they wrong now? To me, honestly speaking, they were right then, they, they are right now. They were wrong then, they are wrong now. We have to understand on this online offline thing that, okay, today COVID is forcing you to be online. You don't have an option. Right. But is it a force that was required to tell you the advantage of online? I would say that right should, now, yes. That's a question which we should be asking. Right. Yeah. So did it require so did it require a natural calamity to wake you up to the need of online or the advantages of online? That should be a question which we must ask ourselves. Number one. Number two, tomorrow COVID will be gone. And I'm sure it will be gone in a few days' time, in a few weeks, months, depending upon the countries. Then will you switch back to offline or will you continue with online? Possibly, the good news here is, now that you have experienced a forced online, you have also had the experience of a, a whole history of offline, you will be perhaps able to better discern right. what is the right media. Correct. So it will be a combination of online and offline and perhaps the right answer will emerge after that. So uh, I, I think in that sense also, COVID has you know, worked that chabuk for you to know that online can be important, can, can be meaningful. So I guess that's, um, uh, uh, that should settle it. Well, this will help us to understand the actual difference between on and offline. That, that's truly really helpful, sir, for all of us to understand how the l &D professionals can act in the current situation at the same time in the upcoming future. Well, sir, I would like to put up the second question and this particularly is being questioned to me a lot of time from the people who are now entering into their careers. So the question is very easy, very plain for me to answer. But for people who are young and for people who have very little experiences in their resume, how would they control their anxiety and, you know, they can have their mental balance of what is the upcoming future for them in the industry? In career terms? Yes, in career terms. I think they have absolutely nothing to worry about. And let me explain why. See, let's not run away from the fact that there are going to be job losses. Right. There are going to be lesser jobs available in the market. Now that can be bad news, but look at the good news part of it. People will still need people. A certain number of employees will still be required. Right. Now, if as an employer, I have to decide which are the positions that I must fill, mm -hmm. which are the positions that I can avoid, I will go by what I describe as the ENDA formula. ENDA formula is essential, needed, desirable, avoidable. Okay. So, it gives you an excellent opportunity to be in the essential category. And in the essential category, the number of people required will be there. More important, it will create a situation where only the extremely skillful, the above average skilled, the above average motivated, the above average knowledgeable will be hired. So if somebody is good, somebody has excellent skills, somebody is completely ready, it's a good news for them. This is a bad news for those who are less skilled, who thought that getting trained or getting skilled was like you know, one of the last priorities in my bucket list. And they will find themselves, honestly, they will find lesser opportunities. So to the youth, the aspiring people who want to enter jobs, my message is that the jobs will be available, but they'll be available to the highly competent. And this COVID two weeks, four weeks has provided you an excellent opportunity of improving that competence. Or even if you cannot improve certain things in such a short period of time, but to make you aware of the need for improving your competence by better skills, by better knowledge and standing out. 
you should be a part of the essential hiring because like it or not for quite some time the hiring will be only limited to those positions which are essential right and those will be in any any category in any industry well said so we have to be prepared for the future but at the same time we need to know what is the basics and we have to make our basics strong to so just have those essential markets crack well thank you sir for this answer in, uh, increase your inner value increase the value inside you add value to yourself because now if i may put it rhetorically now the time will separate men from boys okay so men is what will be needed boys will be told to hold on okay Fine. not that, being uh, that, that's not being that's a really question. really good term that boys need to be grown up now to become men if they really want to have a great future now okay sir thank you for your yeah. answer and my third particular question to you would be with lot of production and revenue losses what is your take for our viewers in reference to emerging economic situations in india and globally well, i would see that as an extension of my earlier answer um, yes we have had a blank period of maybe 30 days or maybe a little longer in terms of our production which right. means we have produced that much less which means there will be that much less money available there will be that much less wealth available now what will happen after the lockout is over there will be a b line for everybody trying to sell things which is obvious whether it is an lnd service or it's a product or something but the situation is that the customer will now have limited dollars i'll talk at the micro level and then i will hopefully come to the macro level. now the customer will have a limited amount of dollars available for every spending Right. now how will the customer choose he will again go by the same enda formula essential needed desirable avoidable okay so you as the person who is selling something who is a part of the economy have to make sure that you are in the essential and the needed category that is on the micro level on the macro level what will happen it is my personal belief that this whole um, episode will throw up more opportunities than it will destroy it will destroy some opportunities some companies will wind up some companies will go bankrupt because those products will have perhaps become redundant that redundancy has been suddenly thrust on the system but the brighter side is that a lot of new demand will come a lot of new products will be required a lot of new services will be required because let's understand one thing take india as an example of uh, the 1.3 billion people are we saying that because of covid and after the covid is over people will not have an appetite bhook mar jayegi kya logo ki logo ki bhook to wahi rahegi actually not possible people have people have to unko apna essential cheez to karni hai shaadi to log karenge hi karenge khana bhi khayenge hi khayenge travel thoda bahut kam karenge lekin karenge hi karenge you see we are not only talking of uh, luxury travel or holiday travel we are talking of essential travel wo to karenge hi karenge that means hamari demand kam nahi ho jayegi kam kya ho jayega ki customer ke paas wo demand fulfill karne ke liye paise kam rahe okay now that is where i believe newer opportunities will have to be uh, explored and those opportunities will have to be followed up personally if you want a one line answer from me to this i believe on a two or three year scenario particularly in an indian uh, situation we will become a better economy than we would have been otherwise so my my outlook is extremely positive yes we will have a very tough time for some time at the macro level we will have a tough time but it will create more opportunities and that will give us a better economic strength and i really believe these positive words are really required at this point of time well sir the next question to you is more of on the corporate world as corporate world is known to be very much ornamental and professionals are used to do a lot of luxury in the in the corporate life specifically and now when a lot of crisis would be hitting various corporates a lot of international travels would be controlled so how do you feel the role of hr is going to be used to handle this particular situation the role of hr in such crisis situation in the world of corporates 
Okay. First, let me talk about this corporate CXOs that you talked about who have luxurious lifestyles and uh, luxurious habits. One thing that will happen is that whether we like it or not, those habits will automate by force. They will give up those habits because <laughs> again, whether we like it or not, a lot of CXO jobs will be axed. Let us understand that if any organization has to cut down its headcount cost, headcount as a cost, not number, uh, it has to cut down its headcount cost, it will look at the highest costs first. Okay. So therefore, a lot of CXO jobs are likely to be uh, in danger. Now, therefore, how the CXO will respond is, is the first thing he will worry for his survival rather than looking at whether he is going flying business class or he is flying economy class. So that is that is how the corporates uh, or the corporate managers will change their behavior. Now comes the role of the HR. In my personal view, although I have a lot of HR people and fraternity telling me that HR ka koi role rahega, HR ko sabse pehle nikalenge, HR ko ko. I don't think that is actually true. In my opinion, HR will become more significant now. And let me explain why. You see, it is known that all organizations will try to cut costs. Now, if they have to cut costs, manpower is one of the costs which everybody will try to cut or reduce. Yeah, there will be government regulations that you cannot sack people, you cannot reduce their salaries, etc. But government will also be able to control it for a certain period of time. After that, the government will not be able to control it because otherwise businesses will close. So there is no doubt that we are going to see a major restructure in the organization. Jobs will be reduced, jobs will be clubbed, certain jobs will be converted from uh, office to uh, home office, certain jobs will be combined, four people's role will be put into one, some jobs will be made, made redundant, some new vacancies will come up. I see a lot of HR activity taking place immediately. One is from an HR perspective and second is from an outright legal perspective. I mean, giving a very sad example, if there's an organization with 5,000 people and they have to sack, uh, let's say, 1,000, how are they going to be able to do it? It needs an HR. It needs a very, very balanced, matured HR person and department to be able to manage that so that both the sides are you know, uh, Controlled, equally balanced. Satisfied. Yes, correct. Correct. And exactly. So uh, the HR role becomes more important. Now, I guess uh, HRs will rather than spending time in those uh, conferences where they discuss the third degree of iteration in the automatic uh, artificial intelligence and all those things. Those are nice. They are good. They should be done. But now they will come to brass tacks. They will have to deal with real human beings and right. their real human being problems. So the future and of this the time, work would be now. The, and what we call the HR business partner this is the time when he will have to prove his partnership skills because he's got to help the organization to reduce the cost to, right. and yet keep the people happy. So that role is going to be extremely significant. Right. So it's going to have, a, the HRs are going to have really good amount of burden on their shoulder to carry. And for that, they need to be really prepared as, as sir, you say, and you advise. The HR is really going to play an important role in the upcoming future. So the last question to you would be, uh, you know, as you are an expert for the small and the medium uh, industries and you act as consultant for various companies, what would be your advice for the plans and the actions which are required by them at this particular time? Okay, um, good. Yes, uh, for the medium small industries, let me give you the good news first. Uh, for the medium small industries, they have they will have an automatic advantage. Though currently they are asking for uh, you know all these things like GST, relax, they do income tax, nahi barenge, provident fund ko ye karenge. Those are minor things and those are temporary things. Those, some of those government will be able to uh, absorb, some of those they will not be absorbed. But they have to look at what are their advantages and then I will also tell you what are their problems. Their advantage is that they are a smaller organization. Now by being a smaller organization, they are a leaner organization. Therefore, their cost of manufacturing, cost of producing or the cost of making a service available to the client is lesser than that of a larger organization. Now, Monica, let me take your example. You are an emerging LND service provider. Right. Right. You have, uh, for you, it is Monica and Monica. Yes. 
as the entire organizational cost. Now think of a larger L&D organization, which has maybe 300 people on this. Now, how many of them are actually working? We won't want to get into that. But your costs are lower, so you will be more competitive. And today, right. people will look for those qualified and experienced people, capable people, who can work at a lower cost. Right. So that way, it will be an advantage to the small and medium sector. That is the good part. The learning point is small and medium enterprises will perhaps be forced to go for innovation. A lot of products will become redundant. Keep that in mind. A lot of products may no longer be required or some customers will move, will completely cut demand for maybe six to eight months. So you will have to quickly innovate and create more products so that you are able to address the demand that is in the essential category. The government ke shops aapko milte rahenge, income tax mein relief milega, wo milega, but that doesn't build organization. That's not a solution. That's that, the, I mean, that we are curing the symptoms. We are not, we are not diagnosing the disease. Right. The disease is that we will need to be more innovative. We will need to create more products. We will need to be faster. We will need to respond quickly. We need to have the right infrastructure. So that would, that is what would be required. And I repeat, for the small and medium industry, besides what the government is announcing, I think yesterday we announced some 50,000 crore as um, a kind of a, a relief. I'll not get into those policy details that's available on the internet. But there will be a lot of support from the government, no doubt. But support from the government doesn't build an organization. What builds an organization is the strength inside. So the small and medium enterprise will have to build that strength inside. Right. I hope that answers. Yes, it does. And in fact, for uh, people like me who are working independently and for all small and medium scale industry, there's a good news. If you have the skill and you have the right will, we can just fly away in these times where, you know, the entire economy is being shaken up. It was really so good to hear you out, sir. And at this particular because time... Because at this time... Yes, please, sir. Please, please do continue. Because at this time... At this time, I will repeat, the better ones will survive. True. So you have a choice. You want to survive, you got to be better. Because there will be some filtration. Well, uh, you know, dust, will, the sand will settle down and mm. clean water will come up. You have to be the clean water. So that is the opportunity it offers mm. and you will have right. more opportunities. Trust me on that. Right. Right. And so before we end today's show, this is not the end though, but before we end today's show, I would request you to share your final message for all our viewers on the masterminds. Oh, uh, well, I don't want to make this sound like uh, very rhetoric, but I can tell you that I see a lot of sunrise after the darkest hour of the dawn. We are going to have a much better time. Yeah, you won't be able to go in luxury cars for a, for a while. You won't be able to eat luxury food for a while. But those are, those are less important things. What is more important is the value that we will create. So that, the value that we will build. Our ability to deal with challenges will improve. Our struggle for being the best will improve. So the message is use this to bring the best out of you. And if it is not inside you, build it inside you and become the best. That is what this will teach. And that is what is the challenge before each one of us individually and collectively. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your, this beautiful message at the end of the show and for answering all the questions which I have got in the recent times. I hope, dear friends, you have, you have been able to get a lot from this particular talk show. Just in case, if you have any more questions which you want to be answered, please share your questions and I will assure I get it solved for you and with a lot more talks on the masterminds. Thank you. Stay tuned. Stay home. Stay healthy. Bye-bye.